attached. We're gonna see if we can pry this free from it. Whoa! Rubber mount. You okay? Yep, that was not what I expected to happen. So that right there highlights the age old question that when I had one of these in the background of a video and we talked about it after an auction, I ended up with email after email after private message from you guys, the subscribers. On one of these Predator 4000 generators, well, 32 to 4000 generators, is the Predator in it a tapered shaft or is it a straight shaft Predator? There seems to be a lot of argument. There seems to be a lot of curiosity and question about it. So that's what we're doing today. This was donated from a friend. It is a dead, dead doornail. It's been used for a few parts and stuff like that. It's missing the exhaust. It's missing the carburetor, a few other things. But at the end of the day, the generator side is still attached to it because it fried. And we're going to find out whether it's a tapered shaft or a straight shaft that you could throw into your go-kart build. Let's get started. Now, with it being a Predator, I'm fully expecting most of the stuff to be 10 millimeters and 8 millimeter. So we're going to go and grab our little Kaimo here, which has been really great to work with. And we've got our ratchet and just kind of see if we can figure out how to take it apart and find out what's what. I think the first thing we'll do is figure out we need an eight millimeter and start taking off the front panel to get to everything, figure out draining the gas tank and go from there. There we go, John. Well, I go grab a container, can you start pulling the bolts off the front? I left the Kaimo over there. Oh, this? Yep. Oh, geez, wheeze. There was some kind of horn or bee that just flew by. Okay. So there's that to throw those in, because I'm sure we're going to end up with a bunch of random. And I'll work on the gas tank. Will you figure that out? Okay. So it looks as if the gas tank goes this way out of the chassis. So I'm going to pull these out and see if this plate comes out like it looks like it does. Yeah, that made the gas tank loose. So I'm going to bet if we undo these ones on the end. Whoop, John, we need a different size. I'm going to bet it's a 10. So we'll take this and we'll pull these ones off. So on the top of this tank, there are four rubber grommets in the corner. And I think that what happens is the chassis on this side stays and then this pulls out. John, you're in the way. Sorry. Uh, okay if you want to do this one, you better do this one. Oh, you think that goes to there? Yeah. Oh, no. No, maybe you're right. Maybe we do have to unscrew that one. Yep, this out. Okay, so that piece came off. So I'm betting the gas tank goes this way now. There we go. So, let's see here. Uh, all the wiring and none of this comes off. Yeah, it looks like there's tons of wiring connected to that before it'll go that way. What if I push it? There it goes. 
All right, so there's a bunch of wiring on the back of there that we could bother caring about, but the real reality is we don't need any of it. So we're just going to see if we can slice these connections. I'm going to grab a pair of cutters. Okay, so what we're interested in, and the point of this video, is that if we take this piece off, is that going to be a tapered shaft in there, or is it going to be a straight shaft? Now, the one thing that we can definitely see right now is that you can't see any bolts there or there which means that we've got to go through the mounting that's inside this. So once we get this off and this off, we'll spin the thing around so that you guys can see what we do to that end. So let's put you in here and position you, and we'll spin the machine around once we cut off the end piece here. Okay, go ahead. So just, so just start turning part of it. Yeah, there's hidden bolts on the inside of there. So, yep, go ahead and pull whatever you can get to there. But I think first we have to undo the mounts on the bottom. Uh, where does this one go? This huh? One? Or... Yeah, just set it in. That's okay. Uh. So you probably need the 10 millimeter. The 10 is that one. That's a long screw. Alright, why don't we spin it around so that they can see what you're doing. Yep. And then you can continue to try and take it apart. So, spin this around. See, somebody's been in here definitely. All the throttle connections are all missing. Okay. So, John, I would say that probably getting these mounts off is the best bet. And I'll see if I can figure out what to do about those bottom ones. Because these look like they're quite significantly bigger. You got one where I got the other? Yep. All right, so those are 13s, and we're gonna need a swivel socket to get to them, so I'll grab one real quick. Oh. Oh. Another long screw. Okay. Uh-oh. What did I do with the socket? Mm -hmm. Did you eat the socket? There it is, that one. Yes, the one down there that I apparently forgot was there. Okay, there we go. So, go ahead and do that with the impact. Why is it so long? You got it figured out? Yep, that's good. I got it. And we're setting these aside because the diesel that we run in the dragster is metric also. So we're keeping these set aside for in case we need them for that. Okay. Okay. 
So at this point, John, why don't you find, let's grab an eight millimeter for you and have you do the two red end cap ones. Yep, do the two end caps. Oh, are they smaller than an eight? Yep, smaller. Okay. Let's see if they're a six. No, they're not a six. Have they seen the train museum? <laughs> Bigger. <laughs> so if it's a seven, yep. So it's a seven. I'm actually missing a seven, but a nine thirty seconds, as a friend told me, works as a seven. There you go. Try that. Okay, you got to learn to go and shift so that the camera can see what you're doing. Oh, okay. But. All right, we are going to grab a screwdriver and try thumping that and see if it'll come loose. Because that's not moving. Okay, so we're going to give that back panel just a little tap. Woo! Oh, there it goes. All right, so. Copper. Yep, copper. I, I, All right, I'm move for a sec. All right, so these right here in back are what we're trying to get to, and obviously this core has to come out of here. So we're gonna try and undo this, and see if this whole core assembly will come out. Uh, Daddy, what, what size? What are these giant screws? There's more of them. Okay, that's a 12, so see if that'll come out. There you go. It's out. Oh, the problem is it's spinning over the motor. Um, hold up, hold up. Uh, let me see here. Okay. I think what we're going to do is we're going to do the old rope trick where you put rope down through the spark plug hole and see if we can seal it up. So here's what's happening. Basically, we got the spark plug out right here. This is connected directly through and bolted into the end of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some rope, which I have here. We're going to push a whole ton of it down into that spark plug hole. And we're going to see if we can get the piston to stick so that we can have back pressure in order to break that off. Alternatively, where we don't care about this, we could potentially try and jam a screwdriver into here and see if we can get it to seize. But we're going to try the rope trick just because. Oh, the ground? That's tiny. All right, so round two on this, we've got some really cheap dollar store clothesline, whatever rope down in here. And we're stuffing in a little bit more. I've probably got about two feet worth of this in there. And see if you can get it to come off there. Okay, let me try. Okay, step out. We need a bigger ogre. All right, we're gonna come back to this with a bigger ogre. All right, let's try this again with a slightly bigger ogre ogre. This is a Aircat. It's a 1431. It's pretty heavy. It's rated for 725. 
foot pound we're gonna dial it in to three out of five and see if this thing will move wrong direction Okay. No world. Okay, let's try that. Nope. <coughs> there it goes. So there's that. Let's see if we can figure out the rest. So at this point, we can see that we've got a couple mounting bolts there. John's going to undo the last of the end of the generator. And then we've got one here and one on the other side to undo. And at that point, we should be able to hammer this piece off and then get to the ones on the inside of there. Well, now that we got everything in the back end detached, we're gonna see if we can pry this free from it. Whoa! Rubber mount. You okay? Yep, that was not what I expected to happen. Okay, well it came free from the rubber mount. There. All right, so let's see if we can knock this back end off of here now. Now, I have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to generators. This is not my cup of tea. I just want to see whether this is a solid shaft in here or not. The copper! And go from there. So, that seems to still be attached in some form. Although it does seem to want to move, whatever it is. There we go, that's loose. Okay. Now, as we talked about before, we're trying to get to the point we can get to those bolts, but they're not gonna make it easy for us. So that one we can get to. That one, however, is on the other side of the flywheely fan thing. So we got to figure out a way to get this thing out of here because it is slammed onto there and it is not moving. So I'm going to try and put some sort of puller on it, maybe put the bolt back in, put a puller down to here maybe, and see if it'll come loose. I never in a million years have seen that actually work on one of these generators when I've torn them apart, so I didn't bother filming it. But just for the giggles of it, I hung it so it was off the rubber, grabbed a hold of it on here, and slammed the end bolt with a hammer. And just like you do with a flywheel. And the stupid thing actually came loose. So... I've never actually had that work. I've torn apart pl plenty of generators for the copper. <laughs> and that actually worked. Now, the question is, what kind of shaft is coming out of it? What do you guys want to bet? If you haven't commented down below, you should have already said. It is a tapered. It is a tapered shaft, and much to my dislove, it has no key at all anywhere. So if I flip this thing over, there's our tapered shaft end going into it. So, that is the end of the mystery of whether those have tapered shafts or not. They're not worth ripping apart in order to build a go-kart out of, 
John and I probably took about an hour, hour and 15 minutes or so figuring it out. That hour would have been better spent just buying a Predator. So there we go. We're gonna rip the copper out of it and set it aside in order to be able to take in. Right now copper is going up in price and John likes doing redneck copper mining, don't you John? Yes. So, say goodbye.